This week, I'm gonna explain how to get your videos from looking like this to something like this so that you can get a bit more creative in post-production. I'm going to be using two common entry-level cameras to show you how to set your basic settings. The older, more basic Canon Rebel T2i and the more current Canon EOS 80D. These settings apply to any camera, no matter what the brand. There are four major settings you need to know on your camera to get a cinematic look. The frame rate, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. I'm going to briefly go over these in this video so that you can quickly get started, and then make separate videos for each of them that go in depth. If you'd like to just get to it, here are each of the different settings to get you started. First, frame rate. The frame rate used for film depends on where you live. In North America, this is 24 frames per second. In most of Europe and Asia, this is 25 frames per second. To set this setting in the Canon T2i, you will need to hit the menu button, and in the first tab, change the movie recording size to the one that shows 24 at the far end. I'm in North America, so for everyone else, this will be 25 for PAL cameras. Anything higher produces a smoother image. Perfect for things like vlogs or sports, where we want it to feel more lifelike. But movies feel more dramatic and surreal than real life, so we want to use lower frame rates. To show you the difference, here is a tracking shot at 60 frames per second, and the same shot at 24 frames per second. The next setting you will set is the shutter speed. The optimal setting for most scenarios is to simply double your frame rate and choose whichever option is the closest. So for most cameras, this will be a shutter speed of 50. In order to change these settings in the T2i, we must first put our camera in manual exposure mode. To do this, access the menu, go to the second tab, and go to the option Movie Exposure, and then Manual. This gives us access to all of the settings we need to set. The shutter speed is the number at the far lower left corner of the camera. You set this by using the vertical wheel located on top of the camera. Set it to 50. This sets how much motion is in each frame, and also how long light is allowed to hit our camera's sensor. The third setting you will need to set is the camera's aperture. This is the number just to the right of the shutter speed. This controls our depth of field and how much light the lens lets into the camera. You will typically want to set this as low as possible for most of your cinematic looks, unless it is for landscape shots. On the T2i, you can set this by holding down the AV button and then using the dial wheel you used earlier to set the aperture. To demonstrate, here's the ADD going through different aperture settings. Notice how a lower number lets in more light and the higher number less light. It is most useful, however, for setting the depth of field. The lower the number, the less background we actually see in focus. The higher the number, the more background we see in focus. The final major setting is the camera's ISO setting. This setting is the final step for making sure your image is properly exposed. Or in more simple terms, not too dark, not too bright, this image is just right. The ISO is how sensitive the camera is to light. You set this by hitting the ISO button on the top of the camera, and then using the dial to change the setting. You can start off by setting the camera to Auto ISO, which will try and correct your overall brightness automatically without changing the other settings. But indoors or in dark scenes, this can cause disgusting grainy images. So once you are comfortable, you really should set it manually. ISO digitally boosts the light in the image. So you want the lowest setting that you can possibly get while still getting a properly lit image. Think of ISO as a last resort, for when you simply can't get the image bright enough by setting the aperture first. The last settings are more minor, but really enhance your ability to edit your footage. First is white balance. You will want to change this from automatic to any other setting that looks good for your scene. The reason is while automatic mode does a decent job, it will switch profiles if the lighting changes in your scene, which means your shot might not match halfway through the take. To keep this consistent, set it manually. The second and most important is the picture profile. 
The standard image profile in the camera digitally colors the image to provide high saturation and high contrast. This looks okay, but because any entry level camera saves a compressed image file, these settings get baked into the footage, making it extremely hard to edit and change later on. To get around that, you need to reduce the contrast and saturation, which provides us with what is called a flat image. If you are using a Canon camera like these, you can download a free profile made by Technicolor called CineStyle that provides an even flatter image than what is possible straight from the built-in settings. If you look at the shadows in the railing, we see almost no detail in the dark areas, whereas CineStyle gives us all of that detail. We can then add the shadows back later in post. For example, here is a tracking shot from earlier which is shot extremely flat. But as you can see from post-production, we can create really dramatic images due to this flat profile saving all of the details. We can change the colors to suit the mood. And there you have it, all of the basic knowledge you need to start getting more cinematic footage. Be sure to subscribe for when I release the in-depth videos for all of these settings, and like the video if it helped you out. And in the meantime, feel free to keep yourself entertained by any of my other videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.